This Eid al-Adha, this Eid al-Adha. Allah's blessings bring happiness, peace, and prosperity in your life. Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear respected viewers of Madani Channel Today in this program we will talk about historical background of Qurban We will also talk about religious benefits as well as economical benefits of this beautiful sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabiyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam Respected viewers be with us from start to end. But before we start our topic, let's make few good intentions. My Sheikh Tariqat, Amir of Ahli Sunnah, Hazrat Allama Maulana Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri Dawat Barakatuhum Al Aliya has given us a beautiful mindset that we should make good intentions. Alhamdulillah, I make this intention that I will present this program for the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. You can make this intention, you will be with us from start to end. You will remember what you learned and you will pass this knowledge on to others too. It was the eighth night of Zul Hijjatul Haram when Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu was salam dreamt that someone said, Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered you to sacrifice your son. On the ninth night of Zul Hijjatul Haram, he had the same dream. Then again, on the tenth night of Zul Hijjatul Haram, he saw that dream again. And he made a firm intention to do so whatever has been ordered to him by Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Now he thought that it's a good idea to discuss that with his own son. Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu salam related the whole story to his beloved son Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu salam and asked, now you tell me what is your opinion about this upon listening to this blessed dream Sayyidina Ismail salam, who himself was very submissive to the will of Allah Ta'ala answered with a great submission which is mentioned in glorious Quran in these words قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجَدُنِي إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ Subhanallah He said Oh, my father, do what you are commanded to do. Allah willing, you will soon find me patiently enduring. Allahu Rabbi. Dear respected viewers of Madani Channel, look at the faith of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu salam. And look at the sabr of Sayyidina Ismail ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu salam. Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu salam had prayed a lot in the court of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And then Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam was born and he was so much beloved to Sayyidina Ibrahim. Now the dearest, closest soul is being demanded to sacrifice for the pleasure of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and Khalil of Allah, friend of Allah. Allah Wani, Sayyidina Ibrahim is ready to do so. And look at the faith and sabr and patience, Allah Wani, of Sayyidina Ismail, Ala Nabina, wa alayhi salatu was salam. When it is discussed with him, he is ready. What was the tarbiyat, Allahu Akbar? How was he brought up by his father that he is even ready for his own sacrifice for the sake of Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala? Now further it is mentioned in tafsir that Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam further humbly said to his honorable father, Dear father, tie me up tightly with ropes before you sacrifice me so that I may not move because I fear my reward may get reduced. Allahu Akbar. How wise this son is. How beautifully he is explaining and requesting to his own father. He further says, Protect your clothes too from the splashes of my blood so that my mother does not become grieved upon looking at them. Sharpen the knife well so that it may slit my throat properly because death is really painful. 
Make me lie on my front, placing my forehead towards the ground, so that you may not look at my face while sacrificing me. And when you go to my dear mother, please convey my salam to her. And if you consider it appropriate, so please give my kameez, my shirt, to her. This will help to console her in being patient. Sayyidina Ibrahim salam said, Oh my son, how helpful you have been for me in carrying out the commandment of Allah Azza wa Jal. Dear respected viewers, now further what happens thereafter, Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam tied his son, made him lie on his front with his forehead placed towards the ground. Having sharpened his knife, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam looking away drew the knife across the neck of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. But the knife did not cut, i.e. his throat was not cut slit. After Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam made Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam lie on the ground to slaughter him. Sayyidina Jibrail alayhi salam brought a ram from paradise as a fidya with the commandment of Allah azza wa jal and uttered loudly from a distance Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Listening to this voice Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam lifted his head towards the sky and realized that the test from Allah Azza wa Jal has turned into ease and Ram has been sent as a fidya to be sacrificed in place of his son. Subhanallah. Delighted. He alayhi salam said, La ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. Listening to this, Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam said, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Since then, the sunnah of reciting these blessed words by these three most respectable and sacred personalities, alayhi wa salatu wa salam, will continue till the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. Dear respected viewers of Madani channel, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala did not need the blood of Sayyidina Ismail ala nabina wa alihi salatu wa salam. Rather, it was a test of Sayyidina Ibrahim that is he able to sacrifice his beloved in the path of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina wa alihi salatu wa salam was successful in that very test. So there is so much to learn for us also. If we are asked to give in the path of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, we should give the most dearest thing in our possession when it comes to giving the part of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. The viewers, the act of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu salam was accepted in a way that until day of judgment, alhamdulillah, Muslims across the globe, they give ritual sacrifice, they do qurbani in the remembrance of the test of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. And Alhamdulillah, this vaqa, this account is recalled whenever the days of Hajj arrive, whenever the Eid al-Adha, the day of Eid arrive and people they give qurbani, sacrificing ritual animals and they remember Prophet Ibrahim ala nabina wa alihi salatu wa salam and Sayyidina Ismail zabihullah ala nabina wa alihi salatu wa salam. We have just heard about in historical background of qurbani now let me mention there are so many blessings to give qurbani in the path of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. It has been mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, sacrificing animals is one of the most loved good deeds by Allah. According to the prophetic tradition, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has been reported to have said, no deed is more virtuous on the day of sacrifice than flowing the blood of a sacrificial animals, meaning giving qurbani. Alhamdulillah, the days of qurbani are fast approaching. And now we should understand there are so many blessings to give qurbani in the path of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. If we want to attain the qurb of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, then we should give qurbani because qurbani is derived from a word qaraba, meaning to get close. So that means if we want to get closeness to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, if we need proximity in the court of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, then we should give Qurbani 
Let me mention another hadith. The beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was requested in his blessed court. O Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, what are these sacrifices? He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam replied, the sunnah of your father Ibrahim. The people humbly asked, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, what reward is there for us in it? He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam replied, there is a good deed for every hair. They humbly asked, what is the ruling of wool? He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam replied, for every hair of wool, there is one good deed. Now imagine, dear respected viewers, how many hair are there in, in Ali? Now, how many good deeds one will attain? Tens of thousands, subhanallah, good deeds can be obtained just giving an annual in the path of Allah ta'ala. Doing a qurbani, and it is further mentioned, whosoever performed qurbani wholeheartedly and with the hope of reward, the qurbani will become a barrier between him and the fire of hell. It's not only a means to attain good deeds, it's not only to attain the proximity in the court of Allah Taala, but it is also a barrier between you, between us, and hellfire. Be believers. That's very important. So we should do Qurbani wholeheartedly with love, inshallah. And we should choose the best animal possible. If Allah has given us, we should choose the expensive one to give in the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. A faultless animal in the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Now, if somebody has got means to do Qurbani, but yet he doesn't do, it has been mentioned that whoever has the means of performing Qurbani and still does not perform it, he should not come near our place of Eid. This is the saying of the Prophet If Allah wa Taala has blessed us, we are able to do, so we must give Qurbani in the path of Allah wa Taala. Dear respected viewers, we talked about uh, the historical background, we have talked about a few blessings and barakas, a reward of giving qurbani in the path of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. There is one whisper of shaitan, which sometimes comes in a mind that uh, what is the need to sacrifice an animal, right, uh, in a very large scale. I mean, across the globe there are millions of Muslims, they are residing and they perform qurbani every year. So what is the need of this? Why not this money be given to any poor, any needy? Maybe you can arrange someone's marriage through this money, or you can help a needy or poor, etc. These sort of whispers of shaitan come whenever the days of qurbani come. The respected viewers, the shaitan who is whispering and put these whispers in a mind, the, his intention or uh, motive is to stop Muslims to perform Qurbani in the path of Allah wa Taala, and that's why he shows some alternatives of doing good deeds but as we have heard there is nothing dearer to Allah wa Taala than doing Qurbani in the days of Qurbani subhanallah it means that is the most beloved good deed in the court of Allah wa Taala. so why should we listen to the tricks of shaitan whispers of shaitan we should no, if the act which is dealed to Allah, if it is Qurbani, so we will give Qurban. Now, in order to eradicate these whispers of shaitan, I would like to tell you that what are the economical benefits of giving Qurbani in the path of Allah wa Taala, in addition to attain religious benefits, barakas, and blessings and pleasure of Allah wa Taala. What are the economical benefits? Inshallah, we will talk on that topic too. Dear respected viewers, according to one research, each Hajj, more than 1.2 million cattle, sheep, goats and camels are slaughtered in the path of Allah Taala. To meet this demand, 3 million cattle during the Hajj season are imported. Almost 1 million imported from Sudan, Somalia, and the remaining 2 million produced domestically inside Hejaz. To handle these massive numbers of livestock, the government hires 1,500 butchers for Hajj from Syria, Egypt and Turkey to assist the nearly 300 permanent 
butchers who are residing locally in Hijaz, carried out with a spirit of total submission in the court of Allah Taala. Dear respected viewers of Madani channel, did you see the economical benefits and socio-economical benefits involved in this? How many jobs are created? How many animals from different parts of the world they are imported into the city where had is performed for Hajjaj so that this ritual sacrifice can be performed? How many people they are um, called in order to do all these sort of arrangements? How many jobs they are created just because of this beautiful act to perform? Now, how much economical benefit is involved just if we talk about this Hajj? Now, imagine throughout the world, Muslims are residing, they are performing Qurbani. So, then you can imagine the scale of economical benefits and the cycle, economical cycle, the wheel, how does it run? I leave it to you. You can imagine, subhanAllah. Be respected Islamic brothers, as I said that sometimes shaitan whispers that why don't you help the poor or the needy, right? What's the need to just sacrifice an animal? So I would like to explain you that because of this beautiful uh, sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina alayhi salatu wa salam performing the sunnah, livelihood of many individuals and households is run through this beautiful sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina alayhi salatu salam. How? Many people raise animals in their homes, cattle farms, with the intention of selling their animals in livestock markets. Now, many people are employed in order to look after these animals and their livelihood is maintained through the blessings of the sunnah of Qurbani. Many vehicles and containers are hired for the purpose of transportation. These animals are transported to the livestock markets. By virtue of this, thousands of people earn a living. Now these people, their households, they may be uh, in middle class families, right? They may be uh, poor people, needy people, alhamdulillah, their household. All this is helped, is an indirect help through this beautiful sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina wa alihi salatu wassalam. Furthermore, the vehicles which transport these animals, they also pay taxes. And when they arrive at the livestock market, they also pay fee in accordance to the amount of space they occupy, which proves to be beneficial to the country's economy. The homes of hundreds of thousands of people are maintained by virtue of the livestock markets throughout the country. Many earn a living through the various food stalls and restaurants and through selling tea, drinks, fodders and saddles, etc. Due to the blessings of Sunnah of Qurbani, the owners of the vehicles which are used to transport the purchased animals back to their homes also earn a living from this. The fuel industry, petrol stations, they also earn these days. During the days of Qurbani, many stores of fodders are set up at many places in cities, whereby thousands of people earn a livelihood. They may be poor, they may be needy, they may be middle class people who are earning through this, subhanAllah. And at many places, guards are also hired in order to protect the animals. If the animals fall ill, the veterinary doctors, they are called in. When the days of Qurbani arrive, thousands of butchers are asked to come and they are tasked with slaughtering the animals and cutting up their meats. Special preparations are undertaken at restaurants, etc. to prepare various dishes from the Qurbani meat. Different things are made from the skins of animals and they are also exported to other countries. Many leather goods, all this leather industry benefits, which strengthen the country's economy. In short, from the very birth of an animal, all the way up until the time of Qurbani, opportunities of livelihood are created for countless people and country's economy also benefits generally due to the blessings of Sunnah of Qurbani. Now, in addition to that, Subhanallah. Can you see, it's not a 
function of just one day. Allahu Akbar, from the time an animal is born, from that time until he is slaughtered in the part of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, this circle, the wheel of economy, subhanAllah, revolves. And how many households are benefiting? Can you imagine a hidden wisdom behind this beautiful sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina alayhi salatu wa salam. The respected viewers, fortunate Muslims, when they give qurbani in the path of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, it is uh, recommended that there should be three parts. One uh, part of the share, one third of the share that is kept at home. Right? The people of the household, they benefit from that. One third is distributed amongst the relatives and one third is shared to the needy and the poor. So you are benefiting, your relatives are benefiting, poor and needy are benefiting. Allahu Akbar. Then this meat goes to even to those houses, they are less fortunate and throughout the year they are not able to eat meat. They don't have that much money. But Alhamdulillah, in these days, they are also able to eat the meat because of the barakah and blessing of this beautiful sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wassalam. So this is another beautiful benefit to look after needy, to look after poor, to help them, to feed them. Furthermore, fortunate Muslims gift the skins of their qurbani to dawat islami and other religious organizations uh, and madaris universities, jami'at of the devotees of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And selling these skins enables them to gather funds to meet several months of expenditure. Thus, fulfilling the sunnah of Qurbani also proves beneficial for the propagation of religious knowledge. Once again, alhamdulillah, when the skin of the animal is sold, whatever income is generated, that is used for good cause, that is used to spread the word of Islam, that is used to propagate the sunnah of Prophet wasalam, that is used to uh, make scholars of deen in Islam. Alhamdulillah, hafaz, uh, they learn Quran, they teach Quran. This is the benefit of this beautiful sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam. And further, my dear Islamic brothers, when these skins, they are collected, so for the preservation of raw hide, salt is an essential ingredient. Now, dear respected viewers, tens of thousands of tons of salt is used. Now, the industry which is linked with salt, now their households, those people, they are involved in that. They are also benefiting from that. In addition to the leather goods and all those industry of of this leather, they are benefiting, subhanAllah, the industry which deals with salt, they benefit the people, they are uh, linked with them, alhamdulillah, those Muslim household families, they are also benefiting from that. My dear respected viewers of Madani Channel, we heard about the economical benefits which are linked with this beautiful sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim, ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam. I hope the whispers of shaitan must have been eradicated. And Alhamdulillah, we should come to understand the fact that if it is a commandment of Allah wa Ta'ala, then we should fulfill it. We should give in the part of Allah wa Ta'ala. We should give qurbani for the pleasure of Allah wa Ta'ala. And imagine if if the, uh, Sayyidina Ismail Bina wa alayhi salatu was salam's qurbani had it been accepted and then I mean, in, in, in its actual term, and then we were to ask to give Qurbani in the same manner, Allahu Akbar, would any person like us be able to perform that? It is a blessing of Allah wa Ta'ala. A ram was accepted instead of the Qurbani of Sayyidina Ismail, ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam. But my dear respected viewers of Madani channel, if we are asked to do so, if Allah has blessed us, then we should give that wholeheartedly. Allama Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Dahili Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi has said, the Qurbani will be placed on the pan of the scale containing good deeds, due to which the weight of the pan of good deeds will be heavy. SubhanAllah. Dear respected viewers, we heard that if we want the proximity of Allah, we should give Qurbani. If we want to attain good deeds, we should give Qurbani. If we want that 
there should be some sort of barrier in between us and the hellfire then we should give qurbani and now we have heard that if you want that the good deeds are heavier on scale then again this qurbani will benefit us and dear respected viewers Sayyidina Allama Mullah Ali Qari Rahmatullahi Al Hadi said then the sacrificed animal will serve as his ride through which the sacrifice performing person will pass over the Sirat, bridge of Sirat, easily and further every limb of the sacrificed animal will become fidya, expiation for freedom from hell for every part of its owner's body. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Bridge of Sirat, do you know what is bridge of Sirat? Bridge of Sirat, it is built on top of hell fire. Do you know how thin it is? It is thinner than a hair. Do you know how sharp it is? It is sharper than a sword. Every soul has to cross that bridge of Sirat. And there is darkness in that bridge of Sirat. You respected viewers of Madani Channel, under that bridge of Sirat is hell. And it is mentioned a believer when he performs Qurbani, he will ride on his Qurbani to cross that bridge of Sirat. What else do we need? If we give Qurbani in the path of Allah wa ta'ala, so inshallah this will become our transport to cross the bridge of Sirat. So dear respected viewers, it's always a good idea. If Allah has blessed us, we should give wholeheartedly Qurbani. And we should choose an animal which is healthier, which is heavier, which is beautiful and good, so that on the day of judgment, inshallah, we will easily cross the bridge of Sirat. But remember, when we are choosing an animal, we should not choose to show off, to tell people that how good, healthy an animal have I purchased. Are we doing that for the sake of people? Or are we doing that for the sake of Allah wa ta'ala? Remember, each and every act which is accepted in the court of Allah wa ta'ala, the main prerequisite is sincerity. The main prerequisite behind is only and only we should perform that act for the sake of the pleasure of Allah Taala, not for the people. Unfortunately, let me address those individuals. They have got a wrong intention of giving qurbani. Sometimes there is a competition. I'll go in the market and I'll buy the most expensive animal, and then people they see him giving interviews on social medias. They post reviews. They post uh, maybe pictures. If it is with the right intention, I'm not commenting on that, but if intention is wrong, dear respected viewers, why are we wasting this money for? Yes, definitely. If we are doing for the people to show off, then that Qurbani will not be accepted because Allah wa Taala is pure and He accepts pure. If the act is performed only for Allah wa Taala, that act is accepted. And if we are doing it to show off, if we are doing it that people will say that person is very generous and every year he gives two or three cows or maybe a camel, a beautiful goat, a beautiful sheep. No, no, they have respected viewers. This should not be the case. Yes, you should buy the best animal. Yes, you should give as expensive as possible as Allah wa ta'ala has blessed you. But do it for Allah wa ta'ala because it is said, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ This nahar, this qurbani should be for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Salah should be for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Sadaqah should be for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Hajj should be for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Umrah should be for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Likewise, qurbani should be for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Not for the people. That's very important to understand. And dear respected viewers, Alhamdulillah, Another important fact I would like to tell you, when these days come, we have heard the best and the deed of good deed in the court of Allah Taala is Qurbani. So when you're giving Qurbani, do not just give Qurbani uh, for your own self. I mean, if Allah has blessed you, you can give more as nafil. Definitely you have to give for your own self. But if Allah Taala has blessed you, then remember Mustafa Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Why? Because Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam used to perform the qurbani on behalf of his ummah. Jo nabhu la ham gharibu ko raza. Yaad uski apni adat ki jiye. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when he was born he remembered his ummah. 
Throughout his life, he remembered his ummah. In caves, in, in this dunya, in this world, he would pray for the ummah. At the time of Qurbani, he would do Qurbani on behalf of ummah. At the time of his departure from this mortal world, he remembered the ummah. Allahu Akbar, dear respected viewers, on the day of judgment, he will be concerned about the ummah. He will do shafa'at. He did not forget us. Why do we forget when it comes to convey the reward in the blessed court of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? I mean, the reward of Qurbani as a Isa al-Sabab, subhanallah, we should also perform an, an Qurbani of an animal for the sake of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as a hadiyah, as a gift in his blessed court. Yes, my Shaykh Tariqat, Amir of Ahli Sunnah, every year, Whenever he performs his own Qurbani, he remembers Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam too. And the best animal he chooses to give in the best court of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as a hadiyah in the shape of Qurbani. So if Allah has blessed us, we should also give Qurbani in the path of Allah wa ta'ala. And the more we give insha'Allah azza wa jal, the more religious and economical benefits will be it obtained, insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. And furthermore, we will get blessings in this dunya and hereafter. And finally, to end this program, as I said, one of the uh, most important economical benefits uh, which is obtained, that is through the skins of animals, uh, especially religious organizations, of devotees of the Prophet ﷺ, like Dawat Islam, Alhamdulillah, when the skin of the animal that is sold, the income is generated, and through that income, Alhamdulillah, the word of Islam is spread across the globe. The work of Deen is done, Alhamdulillah. And dear respected viewers, today you are watching, learning about your religion and Deen on Madani channel. This all set up in system, Alhamdulillah, the work of Deen, the way Dawat Islam is doing, that is all in front of you. and. That is benefit. Now what Islami likewise every year it also makes arrangements for an Ijtimai Qurbani, a collective Qurbani and Alhamdulillah you can contact your local brothers in your locality, in your area, the brothers of Dawat Islam inshallah they will make arrangements for your Qurbani which is done according to Islamic rulings under the guidance of ulama of Ali Sunnah. Alhamdulillah. And finally my dear respected viewers I would like to give you one message what is that? One of the favorite foods of Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was meat. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would say that meat improves hearing and is the chief of all foods in the world and the hereafter. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam declared, if I had asked Allah azza wa jal to provide me with meat every day, he azza wa jal must have provided it. So subhanallah, we respect you as when you eat the meat of your qurbani, so remember, subhanAllah, it is also one of the favorite foods of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the meat of shoulder was loved by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Not only in the days of Qurbani, you should eat that with this intention that this part uh, of the animal was loved uh, in foods by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this will increase love of Mustafa in your heart. But whenever you go uh, to buy meat, you should remember that if I am buying uh, the meat, then Alhamdulillah I can follow the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Wasallam. You can learn about it. What parts of the animal were more dear to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you can go and buy them. Definitely if intention would be to follow the blessed Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Wasallam, then inshaAllah you will be blessed. So that's all for today. I hope you must have benefited, you increased your knowledge about the historical background of Qurbani. You did not only learn about the religious benefits, but you also learned economical benefits of this beautiful sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam. May Allah ta'ala give me tawfiq, give all of us tawfiq and ability to perform Qurbani every year wholeheartedly, not only for ourselves as Vajib Qurbani, but may Allah give us tawfiq that we also perform Nafil Qurbani and give more and more sadaqah in the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So never miss this beautiful sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu salam in the days of Qurbani. That's all for today. We'll come back with such beautiful programs. Keep watching Madani channel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Mubarak, Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak.